Welcome to the third module of the Appeals Division Overview. This module will address the provider appeal process. The following topics will be discussed. An overview of the provider appeal process, provider appeal issues, federal and state appeal regulations, the informal appeal process, and the formal appeal process. The Appeals Division handles two levels of provider appeals, informal and formal. Providers can file an informal provider appeal of any adverse action taken by DMAS that includes appeal rights. Some things provider typically appeal are when medical services have been rendered and the provider is seeking payment, enrollment in the Medicaid program, recoupment of previously paid amounts, audits disallowing incentive payments, and notifications setting prospective payment rates. All types of providers who contract with DMAS can appeal, including physicians, hospitals, residential treatment facilities, nursing homes, adult care residences, home health agencies, durable medical equipment suppliers, pharmacists, and others. Frequently appealed issues include claims and service authorizations. Provider appeals are governed by the Code of Virginia, Section 2.2-4000, also known as the Administrative Process Act, the Virginia Administrative Code, Chapter 12, Sections 30, 20, 500 through 570, and the rules of the Supreme Court of the Virginia, of Virginia, and the Code of Virginia, Part 2A, Appeals Pursuant to the Administrative Process Act. Informal provider appeal regulations allow for an informal fact-finding proceeding at the request of the provider. At DMAS and in the Virginia Administrative Code, we call these informal appeals. Informal appeals can consist of an informal fact-finding conference, an IFFC, and a written decision, or if the parties agree, a decision can be issued based solely on the written submissions. Informal appeals are decided by an informal appeals agent, or IAA. IAAs are DMAS employees. It, import, it is important to know that IAAs do not represent the department, do not prepare the department's case, and do not prepare the department's case summary. If the department representative fails to meet applicable deadlines and regulations, the IAA and DMAS appeals must rule in favor of the provider. Examples of instances where the IAA must rule in favor of the provider are if a case summary is not submitted or is submitted untimely, which means after the 30-day deadline, or if the department does not appear at an IFFC. This is the basic timeline of an informal provider appeal. 30 days after the appeal is filed, the DMAS case summary is due. 90 days after the appeal is filed, the IFFC must be held or all appeal documentation must be submitted. 180 days after the appeal is filed, the informal appeal decision is due. A case summary is due 30 calendar days after an informal provider appeal request is received by the appeals division. If a complete case summary is not submitted by the case summary deadline, the appeal decision will be a finding entirely in favor of the provider, regardless of the merits of the provider's appeal. Contractors who represent DMAS are contractually responsible to DMAS for any financial loss resulting from a failure to meet the 30-day case summary deadline, including any lost overpayment recoupments or legal fees for the provider's counsel. The required elements of a case summary found in the Virginia Administrative Code are for each adjustment, patient, service date, or other disputed matter identified by the provider in its appeal, the case summary must include the factual basis which DMAS relied upon in taking its action or making its decision and any authority or documentation upon which DMAS relied. Providers may challenge the case summary within 12 days. 
DMAS then has 12 days to respond to any challenge of a case summary. The Appeals Division requires the case summaries be uploaded to the AIMS portal by the case summary deadline. If uploads are unsuccessful, the agency is responsible for submission via fax or email by the case summary deadline. On the same day the case summary is provided to the Appeals Division, the case summary must also be transmitted to the provider's representative. The department or contractor is responsible for verifying the case summary deadline provided by the Appeals Division is correct. There are five essential elements to a complete case summary. Who, what, where, when, and why. In the following slides, we will examine each element. Who. Who is the subject of the appeal? The provider, the member, and any DMAS contractors. Who was involved in the denial? Who issued the decision for DMAS or the DMAS contractor? Who will represent the provider in the appeal? Who will represent DMAS or the DMAS contractor? What? What is the decision under appeal? What arguments have the provider and member presented in support of their appeal? What documentation was submitted to support those arguments? What is the clinical background of the individuals making the denial and reviewing the appeal? What authority did DMAS or the DMAS contractor rely on in making the denial decision? DMAS relies on several types of authority to make denial and approval decisions. There is a hierarchy of authority, illustrated here. These authorities are considered by DMAS and their contractors and by IAAs when evaluating a provider appeal, listed in order of highest to lowest authority. Statutes, law that is passed by the General Assembly. Regulations, passed by an agency. Regulations have the force and effect of law. Medicaid manuals, DMAS guidance documents to providers and members, other DMAS policy, Medicaid memos, and other publications. Where? Where were the denied services rendered? This affects the authority that applies to the appeal. Locations can include outpatient treatment facilities a hospital, or a residential treatment facility. Where was the authorization request made? Was it submitted to the PRSS portal, via mail, via fax, or via phone? When? What date were the services rendered? Or if the appeal involves the service authorization, what were the dates of service requested? What date was the authorization request or the claim submitted? When was the initial denial issued? Was a reconsideration requested? If so, when? What date was the reconsideration denial letter mailed? When was the member enrolled with Medicaid? What date was the appeal request submitted? Why? Why was the adverse action taken? The most common rule, reason for a ruling against sufficiency of a case summary is because law or policy was applied incorrectly or the case summary did not explain why the facts as applied to the correct law and policy required the denial or the adverse action. Now I'll provide some examples of ways a case summary can be insufficient did not meet DMAS criteria, with no detailed explanation of why each criterion or requirement was not met. Referencing or relying on an error code alone, without a detailed explanation of the law or policy supporting the assignment of the error code, and why the facts or documentation support the assignment of an error code. If a provider alleges that a case summary is insufficient, 
The IAA will communicate the alleged deficiency to the department and provide a required time frame for the department to respond. With each case summary, DMAS or the DMAS contractor must provide attachments to support the summary. These include a complete copy of the medical criteria used to make the adverse decision, if applicable, documentation of any physician reconsideration, copies of the statutes, regulations, manual chapters, or other DMAS policy relied upon in making the decision. Keep in mind these must have been effect during the dates of service on the appeal. For audits and enrollment issues, the case summary should include copies of the records, forms, or applications audited or reviewed and denied. The case summary should also include a copy of the final denial issued to the provider and any interim decisions leading up to the final denial. Informal fact-finding conferences are an option as a part of the informal provider appeal. These are requested by the provider. If an IFFC is requested, the DMAS representative or the contractor representative must attend in person or by phone or virtually. At an IFFC, the DMAS representative must respond to questions and they may need to submit a written response to any submissions made by the provider during the IFFC or after. If agreed to by the IAA, the provider and the department, an IFFC may be handled via written submissions. If written submissions is chosen, the DMAS representative must be available to answer questions throughout the IAA's review process. Most service authorization and billing appeals are completed with written submissions. If the provider submits any written submissions, the DMAS representative or contractor may need to submit a written response to those submissions. The IAA will request the response and give the DMAS representative a time frame within which to file it. The elements of an IFFC are typically as follows. DMAS or the contractor offers a summary of the adverse action, including a brief explanation of the facts and the basis for the denial. The provider offers a summary of their position on the appeal. The IAA asks questions to clarify the party's positions. At the conclusion of the IFFC, the IAA may set a due date for the provider to submit additional documentation or arguments and for DMAS or the DMAS contractor to reply. This cannot exceed 30 days from the date of the IFFC. The last step in the informal appeal process is the issuance of a written informal appeal decision. Whether the appeal is conducted via written submissions or an IFFC, the informal appeal decision is always issued in writing to the provider. The written decision always contains the reasoning for the decision, any legal authority relied upon in making the decision, and a description of the provider's right to appeal the decision to a formal hearing. It is required that informal written appeal decisions are issued within 180 days of the date the appeal is filed with the Appeals Division. Only providers have the right to appeal the informal appeal decision to the formal appeal level. The department or its contractors cannot appeal an informal appeal decision. In conclusion, let's review the process of an informal provider appeal. Step one, DMAS or a DMAS contractor takes an adverse action and the provider receives a notice that contains appeal rights to DMAS. Step two, within 33 days of the date on the notice, the provider submits a request for an informal appeal to the DMAS appeals division. Step three, DMAS Appeals Division notifies DMAS or the DMAS contractor who took the action of the informal appeal request. Step four, DMAS or its contractor's case summary is due within 30 days 
from the DMAS Appeals Division's receipt of the informal appeal request. Step five, if requested by the provider or deemed necessary by the DMAS Appeals Division, informal appeals agent, an informal fact-finding conference is held at DMAS within 90 days from the DMAS Appeals Division's receipt of the informal appeal request. If an IFFC is not requested, the provider may submit additional written information within a time frame submit set by the IAA. Written submission is forwarded to DMAS or its contractor for review and response. The period for submission and response is within 90 days from the filing of the Notice of Appeal. Step 6. If an IFFC is held, both parties may submit additional information to the IAA for up to 30 days. The time period to submit additional information is at the discretion of the IAA, but must not exceed 30 days. Step 7. The DMAS Appeals Division issues a written decision within 180 days from the DMAS Appeals Division's receipt of the informal appeal request. The provider has the right to appeal the decision to a formal administrative hearing. If a provider is dissatisfied with the results of an informal appeal, they can request a formal administrative hearing. This is known as a provider formal appeal. DMAS, represented by a DMAS attorney, must defend the DMAS department or contractor who took the action anew in a formal administrative hearing process. A provider cannot be penalized for filing a formal appeal. So if any changes were made to the adverse action at the informal appeal level, those changes cannot be diminished or withdrawn as a result of the formal appeal. A hearing officer, who is an attorney selected from a list maintained by the Virginia Supreme Court, conducts the hearing and issues a recommended decision. The DMAS director then issues a final agency decision based on the hearing officer's recommended decision. Unless the recommended decision goes against Medicaid law or DMAS policy. This is the basic timeline of a provider formal appeal. 21 days after the formal appeal is received by DMAS, DMAS's documentary evidence is due. 45 days after the formal appeal is received by DMAS, the hearing is held. 120 days after the formal appeal is received by DMAS, the hearing officer's recommended decision is due. At the formal level, the appeals division prepares the documentary evidence. This usually includes the entire case summary from the informal appeal. DMAS only prepares documentary evidence at the formal appeal level when the formal appeal representative represents the department or contractor. It is the responsibility of the department or contractor to make sure that all the necessary documentation needed to defend their actions is included. If a document is not included, it cannot be used by DMAS in defending the action. Documentary evidence is due the 21st day after the filing of the notice of the appeal. To ensure deadlines are met, DBAS Appeals Division has an internal policy that documentary evidence will be transmitted no later than the 20th day. The next step in the formal appeal process is a formal hearing. Parties are encouraged to schedule a pre-hearing phone conference to discuss the scheduling of the hearing and next steps in the formal hearing process. This usually takes place shortly after the appointment of a Supreme Court hearing officer. The formal hearing is then scheduled. The formal hearing is an evidentiary hearing presided over by a hearing officer appointed by the Virginia Supreme Court. Their role is similar to the role of a judge in a courtroom proceeding. Providers may be represented by an attorney. If the provider is a corporation but chooses to not be represented by an attorney, they cannot engage in any acts that constitute the practice of law, like cross-examining witnesses or submitting legal briefs. The burden of proof is on the provider, so the provider presents its case first in the formal appeal hearing. This case consists of witnesses and exhibits submitted. 
DMAS then presents its case, including witnesses and any documentary evidence. In many formal appeals, the testimony of medical experts is critical in showing medical necessity. Formal appeal proceedings follow this structure. The hearing officer de delivers opening statements outlining the hearing procedure. Potential witnesses are sworn in. The provider presents witness testimony. This testimony includes direct examination by a provider's representative or attorney, cross-examination by the DMAS attorney, and then the hearing officer may question the witnesses if they so please. DMAS will then present its witness testimony, which involves direct examination by a DMAS attorney, cross-examination by the provider's attorney, and then questions from the hearing officer if they please. If needed, rebuttal testimony may be presented by provider witnesses. The hearing is then concluded with closing arguments by the provider's representative or attorney and the DMAS attorney. After the formal hearing, the provider's attorney and the DMAS attorney are allowed to submit legal briefs outlining their arguments. There are two levels of briefs. Opening briefs, which are submitted simultaneously on a date set at the hearing. These are filed with the hearing officer. Reply briefs, which are submitted to rebut any arguments raised in the opening briefs. After all briefs are submitted, the hearing officer proceeds to preparing the recommended decision. DMAS's attorney is responsible for drafting and filing all of DMAS's briefs and may confirm with the department or contractor representative to address complex issues in the briefs. The next step is the issuance of a formal appeal decision. Once the hearing officer reviews all the facts and evidence and prepares a recommended decision, the hearing officer submits that recommended decision to the DMAS agency director. Attorneys for DMAS and the provider then have a short period of time to file written exceptions to the recommended decision. DMAS then prepares a final agency decision in writing, which must be issued within 60 days of the receipt of the recommended decision. The recommended decision can be rejected by the DMAS director, but only if the conclusion is an error of law or DMAS policy. If the final agency decision finds against the provider in any way, the provider has the right to appeal that final agency decision to circuit court. After the final agency decision is issued, there is a brief period of time in which the provider can request the DMAS director reconsider the final agency decision. The final agency decision can also be appealed to the local circuit court, then the Virginia Court of Appeals. By petition, these decisions can also be appealed to the Supreme Court of Virginia. Review in the courts is limited only to the legal issues in the formal appeal. No additional evidence is taken after the formal appeal. To recap, let's review the process of a provider formal appeal. Step one, the provider files a formal appeal within 33 days of the issuance of the informal appeal decision. Step two, DMAS Appeals Division notifies DMAS or the DMAS contractor of the formal appeal request. Step three, the DMAS Appeals Division prepares draft formal documentary evidence. DMAS, the DMAS contractor, and the DMAS contract monitor review the case summary and the DMAS formal appeal representative finalizes the documentary evidence. Documentary evidence must be submitted within 21 days of the filing date of the formal appeal. Step four, a formal appeal hearing is conducted. This hearing is presided over by a hearing officer appointed by the Virginia Supreme Court. The provider and DMAS present evidence and testimony from witnesses. Step five, the provider's attorney and the DMAS attorney submit post-hearing briefs outlining their legal arguments regarding the appeal. The DMAS attorney prepares this brief with input from DMAS and its contractors. Step six, 
the hearing officer prepares and submits a recommended decision to the DMAS agency director. Step seven, the provider and DMAS attorneys submit written exceptions to the recommended decision. The DMAS attorney may request input from DMAS and its contractor or the contract monitor. Step eight, the DMAS agency director issues the final agency decision. This concludes module three of the appeals division overview.